Welcome back to the channel guys, hopefully you're all doing well. This week I've just been super busy. Um, this cold snap has really kicked in now. Um, I've been to yesterday, not a night, I'm not I'm gonna say nightmare. Uh, it was just super busy. Uh, I think most plumbers are the same this time of year. Just I went to six or seven. They're all fairly straightforward jobs. Uh, just no heating, smell of oil and bits like that. I didn't, didn't film anything yesterday, it was just hectic. You know, one job after the next, after the next. You don't really get time to think or breathe. Um, so you just get in there and get the job done. Um, I did include quite a bit of, I think I've got quite a bit of funny footage from Saturday to put in this video, I was just second fixing the bathroom, it's quite, quite an interesting job I suppose. Uh, I've just been servicing my RPZ valves which is like, um, it's basically a, pop, a posh double check valve, it's for fluid cat 4 water so commercial heating systems and stuff like that you, you might find RPZ valves, you do need to be qualified um, to work on them so I might include a little bit of RPZ RPZ valves. I won't go into it in too much detail because um, I don't want to bore anybody. Uh, it's just more showing you what to sort of do and how to test them and what to look out for. Um, what else we've got? I've got some blenders and that to fit tomorrow. Um, today's actually been fairly chill. Um, chill, the weather. Um, no, today's actually been fairly easy uh, so far. I've just done these RPZ valves. Uh, just fitted a new condensed trap on a firebird boiler as well. The plastic was all melted. Uh, the old plastic condensed trap was melted on them. I think that's a common fault. Um, so yeah, today's been fairly easy compared to yesterday. It's not over yet. The phone can ring at any minute. Um, so yeah, um, we'll crack straight on with the video. Hopefully you find it interesting. There'll be probably one more episode before Christmas. Uh, so look out for that one. Um, hopefully this one will go out on Friday. Just not had a lot of time at nights to sit down and edit anything. I've been trying to get stuff ready for my own sort of Christmas and family and stuff like that. So eats into my, a lot of my time, which is the right thing to do. I don't want to be sitting down editing YouTube videos every night because it does take a lot of time. So sort of this week I've been getting stuff ready for Christmas because literally Christmas is next week uh, or next Sunday. So yeah, if you enjoy this episode, make sure you hit the like button. If you don't, hit the dislike and we'll see you all in there. Thank you all for watching. Just a little tip when fitting these back to the wall pans, I find if you put some tape behind that flush pipe cone, it stops it from sliding back as you push in. So we'll get all that lubed up. Just, I'm just using silicon lubricant spray and then we can just literally push the pan back in once we've had a tidy up and that'll, that'll not move then. Assistant's actually behind on this one because it's like under the stairs, it was a bit tight for room in here, but it works quite well. So we can just push this pan in, screw it up, and then get the thing set in. I've been using this ox cutter for a few weeks now. I've been using it to cut these slush pipes and stuff down. It does does a fairly decent job. It cuts it nice and square, nice and neat with no burr. So yeah, just a little tip there. It's Saturday morning, so I'm just not filming much. I just want to get this, this job all wrapped up. But yeah, because it's nearly Christmas as well. Just trying to get this done. All right, should just be a case then, sliding everything back. We can check on the other side whether it's still gone in. A bit hard to do one handed. Just got to line that, bang it up a touch. Not using a flexi because it's on the downstairs. I'm not a massive fan of them. That that should all just slide back in. Just got the push button to do. Fill the system up. Basin to fit. Mermaid balls to do. Shower screen. Shower valves obviously all set up. And then, yeah, hopefully that's done then. Bit to finish off. Got all the tower rail on. I've just got some pipe covers to go on there. But we're getting there. So as we can see on the back side of this, the tape works a treat. The flush pipe's not pushed out. It's fully in to where it needs to be. Pan connector's all in. So the system's on the back side, so we can get to everything. So if the ball valve or siphon ever fails, I've just got to get that cable through the wall with the push button back on the back of the, the plate. I've got a service valve on there as well. And then just make good these holes and that'll be job done. But yeah, it's just freed up space inside the, the actual toilet, putting this on the back because it was obviously saves that much space. But yeah, we can get the pan screwed in, seal everything up, obviously test everything and that pan's all done there. I wouldn't normally screw this into a last, but because I can get to everything behind, from behind, we can we can safely screw that in with the right bit. As I say, normally you'd fix it in last to make sure you've got no leaks, but we can literally see everything. So it should be safe to screw. And then that'll just silicon at the back perfectly. All right, I've just got to get this flush button set up. I'm hoping I can get it in that space there because I think it'll look the best. Um, just need to get my little ratchet out of the van when I go back because I can't quite get that screw in uh, with my long screwdriver I brought in. So that'll go there. And then I've got a cut out through the MDF through the plasterboard, it's, well, it's MDF plasterboard, then MDF again on the other side, and hopefully I can get my cable cable on the back there, so it should be fine. 
as I say, it was the only way we could do this because it was going to narrow the room up too much if the unit had been across there with that one. So we decided to put it behind. I think it makes it so much better. Right, we'll just fill this toilet up, make sure it cuts off on the water line. It looks a bit cloudy, but it's just flux. So I can't actually see the water line. It might just be below that side from there. Hopefully, we'll make sure that shuts off. Beautiful. And then we can give it a test then. Just got the lid put on. If we've got any leaks, we should be able to see them straight away. But yeah, it should be fine. Is it going to turn off for us? It's Saturday, so it won't. They never do. And it might be a little bit high, but we can adjust that. At least it's turned off. Let's go. We've got no leaks. Good. That all looks pretty good to me. We'll flush it a couple of more times, make sure you should be able to see it straight away. So that rubber's all the way in, so there should be no problem. Sometimes these can leak, but again, it should be fine. Right, so I've made sure the shower's in the off position. Middle's off. Uh, can whip these out, make sure there's enough clean off around there, clean all this up, and then we can get the mermaid board in then. Back's obviously already been done. These are just grey panels going on this side. And then we can silicon everything up. I'll probably sit, seal it at the bottom first, then put the mermaid board in and then silicon it again. Yeah, we obviously got the fixed head and then just the spray hose there. We just carefully take these out. There will be a drop of water in them. I sometimes put them on service valves because then you can get everything pressurized up and you know tested and flushed out. Especially when you've got them on a video of water, it should be fine. It's not going to do any damage. It won't be much. Let the pressure go. And take that out. And then the female line set up for the back plate then. So what we've got behind there is a soldered back plate elbow. So literally the, the arm will screw straight in there. We might need to shorten it or lengthen it, but that one looks about right to be fair. So obviously we've got about nine mil, 10 mil mermaid board, and then the plate will just screw straight in with a bit of silicon and clip on. Again, all these should be set to the depth with the mermaid board. It's hard to judge because this was, we got plywood, plasterboard, and then mermaid board, but hopefully I've got that depth set up. Obviously I'll clean, clean all that plaster up. Again, these, these aren't too bad because you can always extend it with uh, like female irons. But it's mainly it's mainly that. If you, me if, you me if you mess your depth up on that, that's when you are struggling because you won't get any chrome on for your plate, if that makes sense. These are the shrouds that go on. Hopefully, that should fall within the plate. So I'll just get the other one. Keep everything together when you do your first fix. It makes your second fix a lot easier. I know this wall's not tanked, but with the mermaid board, it's fully waterproof anyway. So the only joint you've got is in the corner and at the bottom. Everything else is fully sealed, so nothing can get behind that panel. Uh, and then this is our plate, all protected up where we left it. That should. By the time we get the mermaid board on there, that'd be perfect. So it's critical when you do your first fix, that's set right, that actually fall about perfect in the middle i think by the time we get some adhesive and then the mermaid board that'll be set up and that should be dead in the middle of the shower that should be dead in the middle of that and dead in the middle of that i did it all with the laser so it should be perfect so i'm getting there i've just got this to pipe up now just got all this work top cut obviously i've got to seek the silicon around the edge we've had to I had to cut into that wall, but there's a back panel that goes in because I had to alter this first fix because my heart was too far across because the sink was actually going to go there and the base, sorry, yeah, the basement was going to go there and the toilet was going to go here, but I had to alter it to get it back. It just gave it more room in front of the pan. So it worked out well. So all this will be hidden anyway. But obviously I've got my hot and my cold. These are just, these come on flexes anyway. And then I've got a small basin trap because they don't get, they don't give you a lot in front of these panels to get a trap on there. So they can be tricky, so I've just got a P-trap and then obviously hot and cold flexes, which I always put male irons and then onto the flexes. And then all this gets boxed in and hidden when the back goes back. So it looked fine. And so it was just a problem we had to get over with the depth 
but you've got plenty of room there now so I think it'll be fine the back of the unit what I'll do is I'll just form a box in oops I'll form a box in so all that lot's hidden and then that's coming up a little bit wonky because the track is on a fall if that makes sense so that'll all be boxed in nice and neat you probably won't get much of a shelf but it's just made the best of what we could do with the job so see if I can do this one handed but main lions want to go on there first it just gives it a flat face I know you can get flat face service valves but I've always used main lines can't do that one handed and then literally these will just sweep across with no kinks straight onto the uh, straight onto the service valves then so I'm not going to set my GoPro up today because it's a Saturday and I really want to get off home. So on there like that, tighten that up first, then it won't kink and flexy, and then literally just connect them two together. Jet blue your nuts and olives up, and then drop that straight onto there like that. You didn't see any of that, but you can get to these service valves nice and easy. You can get to all the connections, and then flexes aren't kinked at all so that'll be perfect and then i've just got the traps there and all as i say all this gets boxed in so you'll never see any of it i say i'll put the back back in i'll make a bit of a shelf put the back back in and it'll be perfect right with these semi-recessed basins you won't get a bottle trap in so i carry bottle and p traps in the van um p traps a lot slimmer so you can actually get to your nut and hopefully we can just swing that straight across then into that waste pipe you normally find these basically the thin cheaper ones go on all right I haven't actually tried them yet, but I've never come across a situation where one of these haven't hasn't fitted these basins I'm trying to do it with one handed so that should you guys won't be able to see a lot that will go I can't do it one handed but that will go onto that waist fitting which we've already made up I'm going to struggle a bit here because I can't even get that on because you probably can't see so I'm gonna have to try and get the multi-tool in there and cut the back of that rail out I mean the basin can't go back any further so it's just like a bad design really isn't it? but we'll have to get over it I've just got to try and get the multi-tool in and cut that off so I can get that that up there basically always happens on a Saturday but you have to get over these things well I've just managed to get this on oh, I've just had to cut I don't know if I'll be able to show it, but a tiny little bit out the out the back rail, and it's just allowed me to get that that on there. I did actually take the basin back out, so I just need to connect them back up, and then I can just pipe that pipe that trap up. But yeah, it's awkward sometimes plumbing. But yeah, that'd be fine. Right, I'll pop a clip on there just to pull that back straight, and then a couple of forty fives, and it will swing across onto my uh, trap then. And as I say, all this back will go back in. I'll just foam that wall back up, foam these holes so it's all airtight, and then this will all be made good. It'll be perfect, you'll never see any of that. And then everything is easy to get to if it ever goes wrong. I'll just show you the socks cutter. So, clicks on there like that. And it cuts your pipe. Simple. Right, that waste is all connected in. We'll get the water on. Which there won't be any leaks, he says. And we've just got to make the bag good. But I'll do that in a minute. I want to get the mermaid board done next. Fine. We'll wash it all out. Well, I've got the mermaid board on. Top outlet on. Just need to find the bottom one. I can't remember where I put it. It is somewhere. All I do with these. It's just silicon around them that is absolutely perfect the level so just silicon around that behind the plate just for bead of clear will be fine stop any water and then that silicon around as well when i find that i've just got the screen to do and then silicon it up or oh. what i'll do is silicon that bit up first so no water can get behind the screen and then finish the silicon in so I literally just want left-handed bead obviously that's awful. <laughs> Let me do it with the right hand. Let's get it. So it's literally just a bead. This will be wonky because I'm working one handed. You're not even in shot. Right, this will just be a bead. A wonky one because I'm working one handed. But you get the idea that just wants to go all the way around. You don't need to go mental. Uh, something, something like that. 
long as it's sealed and then the plate will just push on we'll get the plate the right way around that will just push on there like that no water can get behind there I need two hands for that bit do I need two hands there we go and then I just clean the excess so looking off where I went wonky and then as I say just screen silicon up job done but the top knob on these controls temperature uh, controls flow so to the left is the main head to the right is the shower arm which is the bottom outlet I don't actually want to turn it on but all these do it's just a hidden allen key and then the handle goes over the top so it's in the middle at the minute because it's in the off position there, there is actually a nice positive click on these ones as well so you know that it's off and then that just tightens up. See, we, we are okay on the depth. We've got another, what, 10 mil, 8 mil maybe. So they are sometimes a little bit tricky to set up when, you, when you're doing your first fix just with your depth, but you need to be right. Make sure that's nice and tight. So you can hear it click. So I can put the handle back on. Well, not much of a handle, just a really a cover cover cap on that. Is that going to go? It will do. It's because I'm looking through the phone. That'll go on there. And then, same on the bottom one, but the bottom one, I just have to set the temperature up. When I get it working, I might just have to set the temperature. But the idea is it gets to 38 clicks, and then you can go hotter and colder. But it might not quite be set up. Put it in the middle, but it don't mean to say it's dead. Right. So that's all done. Just need to find that. I'm sure I had one on site. If not, I could pick one up on Monday. And then just get the screen in. Just got this RPZ valve to check this morning. Service. Uh, got all the proper kit. I am qualified. What this is, catch before black probe prevention. So on commercial heating systems and stuff like that, which this is. This is basically a posh double check valve. But it's got an air gap. Um... So I just need to make sure it's all okay. Check, check to make sure this is discharging at the correct rate. You do your drip tests and all that. So a little, something a little bit different. You don't see too many. Um, obviously we've got expansion, big heating pump. We've got two fiber boilers. My RPZ valve kit's down there. So yeah, it's discharging it in a minute. It might be that I just top the pressure up actually. So that stops it from going back in. But I need to check it anyway. I serviced it last year, or just over a year ago. And we'll check it again today. These are our test nipples that connect onto our hoses. What we need to do is put them in there and then flush out the hoses to make sure there's no air or debris so it doesn't go into our equipment. And then it's just a case of running through the test, checking each one of these to make sure we're getting the correct readings as per manufacturer's instructions. These are classed as notifiable, so you do need to notify the water board before you fit them and after you service them. So there are strict regulations as to heights and positions. This one looks okay, it should really have a strainer on the inlet, um, something we can put on the ticket. And it just basically stops debris going into the valve. We've got an air gap into the drain, it looks far enough away from the wall. I can't actually remember off the top of my head what it should be, but we've got plenty of space, it's nice and easy to work on. It's not fit below ground where it can flood or you know, so it seems okay this one. The only thing it's missing is a strainer. Right, so this morning's job, I've got to put blenders or form thermostatic taps on these basins. There's quite a few to do. I fitted all these to be fair, but now they want blenders. This one I might put a thermostatic tap in, it's gonna be easy enough. Got a service valves down there. I'll probably just change that tap on this one and we'll see how they go. Right, we'll get the water off for a start. Which I know these will work because they're nearly brand new, well less than a year old. And I'm just gonna swap that for a thermostatic tap. And I'll put single check valves on the pipes here somewhere. Just whip that tap out. Right, your tap tails literally just screw in hand tight, no more than that. And then I've just got my bracket piece and then the washer and that will fit straight in there. I just take this trap off just to give myself a little bit better access to the, to the pipes. Disconnect them two there. Whip the fixing out for the tap and then we can just swap this one over then. We'll put that carefully there, try not to spill it. It's one of them in it. 
and go straight down, put it in the bath. Right, that's all tightened in. Just need to connect these back up, but I'm going to put single check valves on the feeds because in the instructions it says that you need them thermostatic taps. So, got some of them to put in there, and then they'll connect straight back on on the top, and that one's all done then. So the water's all back on, I just need to get my thermal imaging camera, make sure there's no leaks, set the temperature. I'll right, just check these temperatures, make sure they're around 39, between 41 and 39, I can set the tap anyway, but it should be preset, it might just take a second to come through. So yeah, I'll do all these, and then it's coming up to temperature. So I just need to check all that and make sure we're good. Right, I'm in a t-shirt, but it is like minus four outside. It was just so hot in that building. They always are, them sort of kids' homes and stuff. It's like 24 degrees, I'm like sweating cobs. Um, I've been, what did I do? I did uh, four thermostatic taps in there and two blenders. So the kitchen sink and the utility room sink, I had to put blenders on, the others I did thermostatic taps. It was just as per specification. Uh, two of the taps were fairly new, two of them were old, but they just wanted them all changing so they were exact, exactly the same across the board. Um, I don't know if they've been picked up uh, so the kids can, can't burn themselves now, but anyway, they're all set to 39, between 39 and 41 per, per manufacturing instructions. I've done them all with the thermal camera as well, so I've, I've got a picture which I can send on the report as well. Um, it took me about, what, about half an hour a tap, so sometimes it is quicker, just change the tap rather than put a blender in. Um, so yeah, that went okay. Uh, what am I doing next? I have no idea. I've got so many places I need to be. It's the time of the year. As soon as you, the cold snap hits, um, it just goes crazy busy. The phone hasn't stopped ringing all day. I've not been able to get as much footage as I wanted. It's just mad busy this week. You don't, you don't know whether you're coming or going sometimes. Um, so yeah, I might end the video there. And as I say, there's going to be one more episode before Christmas. So try and get that out, I don't know, uh, Thursday or Friday before Christmas. So yeah, if you did enjoy this week this week's episode, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.